as with other questions, I am most interested in the strategy and the approach that you take to this question rather than actually the machinery of just crunching through the numbers, where in an extension exam, that's what really matters. So I want you to look carefully at this question and I want you to think about, okay, I know, I know there's a lot of stuff there. I know there's a lot of stuff there. But I want you to think about what might be the most efficient path through this because there are some very inefficient paths through this. That they just, they'll take you off on the garden path. So I want you to have a look. You've got one, two, three, four terms. Count them. What do you see in common with every single one of the terms? They have the same base. They're all log base B. So that's really nice. There's another thing that I can see in common with a lot of them, but not every single one. What do you see if you have a look at the one, two, three, first three terms? They all have a two at the front as a coefficient, right? So I've got two targets that I'm immediately looking at as, OK, if I can take advantage of those, that'll be good. Now, we said the first three terms all have that two. This term also has a two. It's just hiding, right? Where is it? It's up in power, right? So the very first thing I should do, bless you, is get that two out the front, because then I can get rid of it across the board. Okay. So let me write that down. I'm going to have two log base b this. All of this stuff is going to remain unchanged. But at this point, once I've reached the last term, I can manipulate that and bring that two out the front. Like so. Okay. Seeing a common factor of two all the way, I'm just going to divide everything by two which gives me this. <clears throat> like so. And um, I now look and I see that first thing you mentioned, which is in common across the board, is a log base b. But I've got one log on the left, and I've got a whole bunch of logs on the right. If only there was some way to combine all those ones on the right so that you've got one on both sides. Oh wait, I can. With these three logs that are being added and subtracted, what does that mean for log laws? These guys will end up being multiplied into the same log and this one will end up being divided. So let's write that out. You're going to get log base b of OK, how's it look so far? Looking OK? All right, now, when you have a look at this, you're like, I can at least get rid of the log base b, etc. But this is still a bit of a mess, right? So when you have a look, I can say, well, x is going to be equal to that. Have a look up the top here, right? This is something else that you recognize from algebra. What is that? Difference of squares. And then on the denominator here, you got these two guys, you're like, Ugh. fractions on fractions, that's not very nice. What am I going to do with this? You can put these on a common denominator together, right? But if you do that, you're still going to have a fraction of fraction. There's nothing wrong with it. I just think it's, for me, mentally, I want to get rid of fractions on fractions as quick as I can. It's just easier to work with. So for me, the easy thing to do is to multiply this whole fraction by a on a. Now, you can just as easily add, this will be fine. But again, I'm trying to think of an efficient path, a path that just is less work on my brain. And this is going to get rid of that quickly. So I've got this on the top. What do you get on the bottom? Oh, that's handy, right? So you can see cancel, cancel, and there's your solution. Okay? So it's nice when you get shown, oh, this is the, oh, this is, this is the nice answer. But I want to point out to you if you think before you start simplifying, it's a bit like trig identities. Do you remember when we had to do them in the AP1? You can go round and round in circles using all the different trig identities that you are aware of. And it's going to get worse because you're going to learn more trig identities. But it's smarter to look first, just like you're planning an essay out, and think about what structures you can take advantage of and go in that direction. Don't just drive aimlessly, head towards your destination. Restrictions? <laughs> Are they just there for fun? Uh, <laughs> why are the restrictions there? For two reasons. Um, number one, they're actually being nice to you. So I've pointed out before, in fact, that question I did in green, right, over here, before when I started. Um, there were restrictions there, but they were implied. So it's actually more work to think about what the restrictions are without being told them. Can you see that this, this here, 
is implied by this. Do you see that? Okay. But there's actually another functional reason why they do that, because this is not the only thing you can do to go through it. For example, if I wanted to, I could have written the left-hand side like this, right? Now we've talked about how this and this are kind of equal. They're kind of equal. They are only equal if you say this, right? Because otherwise you can put negatives here and you can't put negatives here and they're not equal, okay? But if you do have this restriction, which they have very helpfully supplied for you, then you actually can go down this line of working and you'll still get answers at the end. Uh, in fact, I believe the solutions, and some people have looked at them already, um, I think they do go down this path and then their second last line is this. Now if you think about this carefully, you recognize that this has more solutions than this, doesn't it? If, if this is your last line, what would you write? You'd write plus or minus, right? Like if that was 25 on the right hand side, you'd say plus or minus 5. But in fact, the domain restriction that they provided for you helps you recognize. Even if you wrote that and then that, you've got a mechanism for getting to here because only one of those solutions is valid because only one of them is in the domain that's been supplied. So if you're wondering why that's all there, partly because it's implied by the logs, but also to help you out if you went through a different path.